but it's going to be a slightly different version of the one that I did, I guess nearly a year ago now, on undetectable makeup for men included stubble. I'm going to do this similarly, but I'm actually going to worry less about it being 100% undetectable and just have a bit of fun with it, maybe put a bit more makeup on and something a bit more summery which is going to involve already a bit of a base tan or fake tan and doing eyebrows and things like that. So it also applies to you ladies watching, uh, you just have to not worry about the stubble. So yeah, enjoy the video and make sure you like and subscribe and send me a comment down below with what kind of products you like at the moment and what you're enjoying using. Right, okay, so I washed my face today using the Pikachu Moisture Foam Cleanser by Tony Molly and I'm still really enjoying all the products that I've got from Japan and yeah, uh, in terms of the moisturizers, I've been using the face washes a lot more. I've had to kind of force myself to use this stuff which is why I'm gonna use today as a great example and I'm just gonna use it today as the first base. So I used my cleanser with my Black Foreo 2 for men. Um, that is clean, it's just black shows up any and I use it well, so. So I'm basically just dotting this. And the benefit with this cream is it's super, super light. It has a really nice sort of citrusy, lemon kind of note to it. Uh, it's very quickly absorbing, but the only one thing I sometimes worry about with it is that it leaves quite a um, sheeny finish on the skin. And that's something that I've definitely realized from using it. So with this, I would always recommend to use a primer. But I was going to say, if someone's going to be using a product like this, you're most definitely probably going to use a primer as well. So um, yeah, I wash my face completely. There's nothing on my skin whatsoever. I basically just comb through my eyebrows and that's it. With a huge barrel brush. No, with a, like a spoolie. And then yeah, so that is the, I guess, first initial base. I just wanted, I didn't really need to include that, but I wanted to, to show exactly what I'm using on my skin now. That also doesn't mean that you have to. Any face wash is gonna do the job. It just has to work right for your skin and not upset the ecosystem of it. Right, if I ever look away from the lens, it's because I've got a mirror here and I can't, after the moisturizing, like I said, it leaves a bit of a sheeny finish on the skin. So I'm going to, use this primer. It's number seven, Airbrush Away. They do a selection of them. They do like a green color correcting one. This is the radiance boosting one. And then they do a one for like shine free or something. This, this is something that I've, I've seen for maybe like a year and a half. And whenever I've gone in the shop, I've always put some on my hand just to show exactly what it looks like. And I can't even, I'm gonna try and do this on camera. Okay, right? That's white with a tinge of like pink. And then, oh, focus. As soon as I swipe it like that, you'll see that it'll go like more pinky. If you can kind of notice it, it goes like a salmony pink. And this is honestly, do you see what I mean? This is one of, probably one of the best primers. I've ever used, ever. It's not the best in terms of shine control, but in terms of radiance boosting, which is what it's claiming to do, it does the best job possible. And I'm so happy I went for it. It is 16 pound, which is quite expensive for number seven. I mean, some of their foundations are as much, and I would never think to buy a foundation priced primer. I mean, the most expensive primer I think I've ever bought was 20 pound, and even that was ridiculous and I've still got it, it's like six years old. The next step that I like to do, color correct or tone the skin out a little bit. So today, I'd like to think I don't look very tired. Um, and to be honest, on some days when I didn't want to wear anything, this primer is just more than enough, but I will warn you sometimes flashback is, is pretty intense. So just because I want to look even more kind of, I guess, awake. Oh, get out of my eye, literally. Anyway, so these are the Barry M color correcting ones. 20 minutes later. Sorry, my memory ran out and I think this is literally absorbed completely into my skin. The, the only one that I'm really using at the moment, and even if that, 
I don't use it a lot, but it will be just this one. So what I'll do is, this is really dried, look at that. Like, actually not that carefully. I'll just brush it and dab it under the eye. I know this isn't the most glam way of doing it. But you'll actually see how, how easily it blends, like genuinely. And the only danger with this is if you put too much or you are much more tanned and it, it's really contrasty but like as you can see now it doesn't actually look you know it doesn't really look like I've got anything on at all so to be honest on a day that you wanted something just really light you could get away with even just having something like this but for the sake of this video and to just make it more interesting I'm just gonna go all out so yeah, if you do want a video of these let me know I'm then going to get into the actual skin base. So today I'm going to be using foundation I haven't used in a long, long, long time. At least over a year. And I've recently just been into trying it back out again. Um, the reason being is it's pretty full-ish coverage. Um, sorry if my voice goes by the way. It's like not there. <laughs> It smells amazing, and Bourgeois is supposedly made in the same factory as Chanel. So that's fine by me. And in some ways, I actually prefer this to the Chanel foundation. I've only used the, I mean, the Perfection Lumiere and the Aqua one. Um, but so much is price related for me. And then I can just relax and I don't really mind about wearing it. Or, I can dilute it with a moisturiser without thinking like, what am I doing diluting this really, really, really expensive foundation? Like, just enjoy the coverage. Like, I'd rather just decide if I want to or not. So, to make it really, 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 um, by the way, before you use it, like out of the camera, I'll always warm up brushes. So whenever you're using a brush, always, always, always warm it up first on the skin and the finish is so much better. Um, I can't even tell you, it's so much better. In the last video, I also used a beauty blender to give that like really, really, really dewy, natural look. But because today I'm not as worried about it, it will actually end up looking pretty natural. I, I've never, hopefully never looked, well to be honest, I, I, I wouldn't really mind if I ever look like I'm wearing makeup. I enjoy wearing it, so it doesn't matter and it will always start a conversation, I guess. But today's makeup look is going to be pretty natural looking but I'm not that bothered about it looking completely undetectable but what I am going to make sure is that it blends completely with the neck area and stubble area which I think I am nailing right now. One other tip, I just don't really like wearing foundation on the neck at all and I know you've got to blend it in but I don't think I've ever actually most of my foundation, it may just be lucky, or blending, or whatever, or my neck is already more tanned than my face, but I genuinely never really have that problem, but I know that that can happen, and definitely saying that realistically, there's definitely been time, so you can either warm it up by using a bronzer on um, skin areas that you want to blend in, so you can warm up your neck a bit with like a powdered bronzer. I actually haven't got any at the moment, I only have cream bronzers, which I need to sort out. So if you know a really good powdered bronzer, which is matte, let me know please. Or what I really like to do is I like to fake tan anyway. So what I really enjoy is that when I fake tan um, a day or two before, I'm always left with a bit of um, tan still left on the skin. And that just means that I can get away with using, you know, darker foundations and, and it looks really natural. I don't need to worry about blending it as much into the neck because everywhere is just darker anyway. I'm still on these. Not the exact same ones, but I'm obsessed with these things. They are the best things. Ever. and this is the second ones that I've bought. I got these about two weeks ago. They are just the best.
tripod Hit the slow-mo Left the key at the spot By the bathroom It's about to get hot On this lake shore Just be ready when it's prime time There we go so as you can see, it's not that different, but it definitely just illuminates the skin better. I do like to use it also just under the contour that you'll do here. I never, I'm trying to remember if I did that the last time in the video, but anyway, I enjoy using it that way. And I mean, these are like 10 pound. I, yeah, I, and then they are quite waxy and they're pretty thick. I mean, you can probably definitely find better contour sticks but in terms of the ease factor and things that i've genuinely used so many times since buying them i can't fault it in any way that they're probably the best thing i've ever bought skincare wise and now i'm going to do my eyebrows i don't use a lot of like fancy things i did in the sense of forking out for this which is the bobby brown long wear brown pencil and this is in shade blonde. This is when I was more blonde as well. And then it came with a really good um, eyebrow setting gel. And just clear. This was like 20, 25 pound, which is a lot of money. Whereas this was, I think, two pound 99 from Superdrug. And okay, it's really used, but I don't care. We all <laughs> use our makeup properly and this needs to get battered. Obviously, I don't use the darker one. Oh, this is all weird angles. I only use the mid and that one, uh, with this one being the most that I use. This is like a two pound makeup brush I got from Superdrug as well. Yeah, I mean, it honestly works for me, and thankfully I'm also, my eyebrows, I'm growing them out, so they are looking a bit happy to be here and everywhere. Uh, but I'm just going to do this, I'm going to add some music. So I let this bit wait for around 10 to 15 seconds. I always find that the gels, it needs to set a little bit to have like a bit of tack and then you can better move them into the direction that you want. I only used the um, Bobbi Brown bit for the edges. It really doesn't do much, but I just think while I've got the product, it's worth using it as well. But 100%, the only thing that I really think is needed is just that little palette that I've got and I mean the price is amazing and um, for one you know for something for your eyebrows to be that inexpensive so yeah I'm going to also just set I'm, I'll just complete it to show you guys so I'm going to be using again I swear by this best powder so far <laughs> I'll say not ever but it's amazing the only one problem is no matter how good I was trying to is this gonna show I left all the sellotape on this side and left only that bit open. And even then, I'm still getting all this bit on the top. It's crazy. So I feel like every single time I leave just this like trail, God knows what people think I do in the bathroom. It's not that. Um, so yeah, so I'll always use the lid because I feel like that's better. Um, and again, I'm still using the It Cosmetics powder brush that I got 
with um, purchasing the Cosmetics Translucent Powder. I have said in my last video that this was like a really good um, dupe towards it and I still agree profusely. I feel like for guys it's so much harder, you, I can't just take makeup everywhere I go. I mean the most you could, well I guess you could take anything if you have a bag and things like that which in that case then I, I definitely would. But it is really hard sometimes and I mean pockets are only getting smaller and you can't fit in it. If you want me to do any other sort of videos or try anything else wise makeup, let me know. I, I yesterday coloured my hair, so the last video I did, um, I used the L'Oreal Dialyte in the 901, I think, 903. And yesterday I did it in the 10.13, which is like a goldeny ash. And I did that again, the same procedure. I was gonna record it, but it was an hour before going out for dinner. So yeah, um, and I really enjoyed it and I cannot wait to do the whole colour. I'm literally gonna mix three of the dialytes together and over bleached hair. So that is gonna be probably the next video I'm gonna do. Um, so make sure you tune into that. And I hope you're all having a great start of the summer. And yeah, if you haven't subscribed to me, you know what to do and give me a message or follow me on Instagram and say hey. Anyway, I'll see you guys soon and thanks for watching. Bye.